Hi guys, I'm Faida, and today we're going to be talking about the African diaspora in China. Freedom is now, usually in these videos, we look at African diaspora communities that have been living in various countries for hundreds of years already. Although Africa and China have a long shared history, the African diaspora in China as we know it today is predominantly a migrant population that has arrived in the last 30 years, enticed by the trading potential in China's industrial boom. In fact, the largest migrant African population in the whole of Asia resides in China. In 2014, there were reported 500,000 Africans living in China, of which the largest settlement can be found in Guangzhou, the fourth largest city in China, 75 miles northwest of Hong Kong. Other concentrations of Africans live in Beijing, Shanghai and Yiwu. The dominant languages are English, French, Arabic, Swahili and Igbo. The African enclave in Guangzhou is informally referred to as Chocolate City or Little Africa. In 2014, Guangzhou had 16,000 residents from the African diaspora, including many men who intermarried with Chinese women and had mixed-race Afro-Chinese children. China and Africa have been regularly trading since the 7th century, when Arab traders during the Tang Dynasty trafficked enslaved Africans to China. The Chinese referred to the Africans as Kunlun, loosely meaning dark skin, and regarded them as being unruly, ignorant and frightening. Over time, throughout the Tang and Song dynasties, Chinese perceptions of the African diaspora became more nuanced, with some Kunlun being portrayed in folk tales as heroic. During the Yuan dynasty, a number of African commodities were imported to China, including ivory, tortoiseshell and frankincense. During the Ming dynasty, the Chinese imported rhinoceros horns, amber and animals such as zebras and giraffes from East Africa. European colonial expansion dampened Sino-African commercial relations. However, by the 19th century, there was a trade revival as China and Africa began to exchange herbs and spices. At the turn of the 20th century, some of the first African Americans began to arrive in China. Buffalo soldiers were sent to suppress the Boxer uprisings in 1900. Large numbers of African Americans came to China during the First and Second World Wars, largely working as manual labourers. Six African American battalions participated in the construction of the Lido Road, which went from China to India. After declaring itself a communist nation in 1949, China invited African students to study in Chinese universities to encourage good relations with African political leaders. Increasing numbers of African students arrived in Beijing and Shanghai over the years, which eventually led to growing racial tension. These eventually spilled over into violent clashes, the biggest of which occurred in 1988 at Hohai University. During the economic boom of the 1990s, swathes of entrepreneurial Africans migrated to China to exploit lucrative trading opportunities, largely settling in the port city of Guangzhou, or Chocolate City as it's also known. To this day, they capitalise on buying cheap consumer goods in China, which they then export to their home nations in Africa to sell. Most traders only come for temporary periods of time, though many do settle and start a life in China, often marrying local Chinese women. In 2014, there were reportedly 16,000 African and Afro-descent people living in Guangzhou, and 500,000 in China as a whole. The community in Guangzhou has notably dwindled in recent years, due to a crackdown by Chinese authorities on immigration enforcement. The largest diaspora group in Guangzhou is the Nigerian community, then followed by Senegal, Mali, Guinea and Ghana. Naturally, these diaspora groups cater for their own communities in terms of market stores, shops, restaurants, supermarkets and entertainment venues. Afro-descent people have had varied experiences in China, where there is at times an othering of black people and negative stereotypes prevail. In 2019, a big racial debate was sparked in China when a mixed-race Afro-Chinese contestant named Lo Jing entered a televised talent contest. Born to a Chinese mother and an African-American father, Lo Jing was raised in Shanghai. She garnered huge interest on the show, not because of her singing abilities, but because of her dark skin and African features. Not all of the attention was positive, 
and Lojing was the target of a slew of online racist abuse. The vitriol largely came from outraged spectators who argued she wasn't Chinese enough to represent Shanghai, despite having been born and raised in Shanghai by a Chinese family. Lo Jing was eventually voted off the show, traumatised and disheartened by the abuse she had received. Another famous Afro-Chinese public figure is Ding Hui, a biracial volleyball player born in Shanghai to a South African father. He is the first person of African ancestry to play for a Chinese national team. As Afro-Chinese relations continue to develop and as cross-cultural contact progresses, perceptions are gradually changing. Freedom is-